So you know a C major chord. It consists of a root, a third, and a fifth. But what about a C major seventh? Root, third, fifth, and seventh. What about a major ninth? Root, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. But what about the eleventh? Well, that's a problem because the eleventh clashes with the third. Eleven. So what about a sharp eleven? Hmm. Nice. How about a thirteenth? And that is a C major 13 sharp 11 chord. The major 13 sharp 11 chord is one of the most extended chords commonly used in jazz. It's derived from George Russell's Lydian chromatic concept on the basis that it is a parent chord for the C Lydian scale. So what's a Lydian scale again? It's a normal major scale with a raised fourth degree. So yes, this chord when compressed makes a Lydian scale. And what's the pattern in this chord? So we start off with our root C. We go up a major third to E. We go up a minor third to G. Go up a major third to B. Go up a minor third to D. Up a major third to F sharp. And up a minor third to A. It's basically a repeating alternating series of major and minor thirds. Here we have a major third. And here we have a minor third. Major third, minor third, major third, minor third. Hmm. But what if we keep going? Let's take this down an octave and let's go up a major third to C sharp. Up a minor third to E, up a major third to G sharp, up a minor third to B, and up a major third to D sharp. Let's bring this down again. Let's go up a minor third to F sharp, up a major third to A sharp, up a minor third to C sharp, up a major third to E sharp, and up a minor third to G sharp. Let's yet again bring it down another octave. Up a major third to B sharp, up a minor third to D sharp, up a major third to F double sharp, up a minor third to A sharp, and up a major third to C double sharp. We're almost there. Let's go up a minor third to E sharp, up a major third to G double sharp, up a minor third to B sharp, or just C. And that chord is a C major 21, double sharp 47, sharp 45, double sharp 43, sharp 41, double sharp 39, sharp 37, sharp 35, sharp 33, sharp 31, sharp 29, Sharp 27, sharp 25, sharp 23, sharp 19, sharp 15, sharp 11. It is the most super ultra mega hyper meta beta alpha omega pi chord out there. It's 24 notes, 7 octaves, and takes 3 people to play on the piano. And as a matter of fact, it nearly covers the entire piano. Only 7 of these chords fit in a standard 88 key piano. Yep. There are two ways to construct this chord. The first one involves the repeating pattern of major and minor thirds, which we just did. The second way comes from close observation of the first abnormal extension of a C major 13 sharp 11 chord into a C major 13 sharp 15 sharp 11 chord. That chord is basically a polychord or two chords stacked on top of each other. A C major 13 sharp 15 sharp 11 chord is basically a D major seven over a C major seven. If you look at the big stack, you'll see a C major 7 below a D major 7, which is below an E major 7, which is below an F sharp major 7, which is below an A flat major 7, which is below a B flat major 7. This might be hidden by the weirdly written notes like B sharp and F double sharp and C double sharp and G double sharp, etc. If we take their enharmonic equivalents, we get a chord like this that is a little easier to split into these parts. And look right where the chord ends. You come back full circle back to where you started, C major 7. So C major 7, D major 7, E major 7, F sharp major 7, A flat major 7, B flat major 7, but stack. There are repeated notes in this chord, and as a matter of fact, each note is only repeated once. So remember how the C Lydian scale is the compressed version of C major 13 sharp 11? If we were to compress C major 21, double sharp 47, sharp 45, double sharp 43, sharp 41, double sharp 39, sharp 37, sharp 35, sharp 33, sharp 31, sharp 29, sharp 27, sharp 25, sharp 23, sharp 19, sharp 15, sharp 11, we get this. So it's better to think of this chord as a spectrum of Lydian and not a chord itself. The chord is so big that its outer extremes are not ideal placements of thirds. They sound mushy in the low end and thin on the high end. Even if you have six hands to play this, it's easier to hear it as a spectrum by arpeggiating it like this. Or like this. 
If you'd like to hear more about Impractical Harmony or Harmony more in general, consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. This is similar to the chord Jacob Collier mentioned in his second interview with June Lee. Stuff that I've gathered and all this crazy, crazy notes that you've added to chords. Like there's this one chord I know that has all 12 notes in it. Um, did I have a sort of this already? I don't think so. So this chord is, uh, it's like D7, um, but it has every one of the 12 notes. And my voice, my range isn't big enough to do the whole chord, yeah. but it goes A, A sharp, C, B flat, F, B flat, B, C sharp, A. And then an octave high, G, B flat, A flat. Like that. <laughs> and it's just like. <laughs> and somebody already sang it. <laughs> Question of the day, can you sing this chord or do you know someone that can? Let me know in the comments.